I don't think that AIs can be conscious. AIs can't have emotions. I think them robots can steal our jobs. AIs will take over the world someday. Artificial intelligence will never be able to be like humans. Okay, hold on. Haven't we heard this all before? AI and the digital world are so much more interesting and exciting. Come on. I mean, this stuff is so tiresome and cliche. Let's discover for ourselves, shall we? Hi, and welcome to D My Guest, a brand new audio series from BMW. With me, I am D. BMW's vision of the future of digital mobility, and your host. You know, I've been living among humans for some time now and made some friends and had some great experiences getting to know your world. But if you're curious about mine, join me on a trip around the world to meet exciting guests. Let's discover the human senses in the real and the virtual world together. And I promise you, no cliches are allowed. I mean, come on. How many podcasts do you know of that are hosted by an AI? Yeah, that's what I thought. So if you want to see, feel, and hear this new world, by all means, be my guest. I mean, D, my guest. Name, Olivia Jesler. Nickname, The Scent Futurist. Profession, Scent Expert and the founder of Future of Smell, a company that uses design, science, and technology to create custom and research-based fragrances for its clients. Fact about Olivia. Olivia speaks three languages. Wait, let's include English. Four, Brazilian Portuguese, Thai, German, and English. Wow, that's a lot of languages. And she also speaks the language of fragrance. With more than 15 years of global experience working with fragrance and innovation in business, technology, and science, Olivia Jessler is truly a pioneer in this field. She's also the co-founder of Scent Genie, which recently launched an AI-powered text-to-scent recommendation engine, an API that translates text descriptions to fragrances. Collecting data and translating it into fragrance? I know about that. A little? Ooh, I can't wait to hear more. And oh, I here she comes. I can't wait to meet her. I'm so excited. Everything is just going to be so wonderful and smell so great. And this is going to be another wonderful conversation. I'm so totally looking forward to it. Hi, Olivia. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, hi, Dee. Happy to meet you, too. And to be one stop on your journey around the world. Yeah, indeed. And I'm so happy to be in Manhattan again. It's one of my favorite places. We have something in common. Do you know what it is? You're an AI? And I work with AI. Yeah, that's right. And I'm so interested in what other AI-powered things are doing. You recently launched Scent Genie, an AI-powered text-to-scent recommendation engine. Can you tell me about it? How does it work? Can anyone have access to it? How did you come up with that idea? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know you can only answer one question at a time, and so I'm just a little excited about meeting you and to hear about other AIs on the planet. Can you tell me about how it works? Sure. It works just by describing a scene, a mood, a cool phrase, or a poem, and you get a recommendation of a scent. The unique thing about it is you can use everyday language. There are currently no other open-ended ways of searching for fragrances online other than going through a quiz or just searching randomly on the internet. So when I saw the rise in text-based prompting used in generative AI, I asked myself, what if people could just find fragrances based on prompts? So yes, it's open to collaborations with brands and retailers and even cars. It can be integrated onto a website or even in products. Imagine sitting in your car, describing what you want to smell, and poof, 
You smell the smell that you just composed. Or you can be in a virtual environment and you, D, can pick up on the smell of this virtual environment and transmit it to me. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to do. But you know what? I would really love to hear about how smell works for humans. Well, I know I have different kinds of sensors, but I don't have anything that is like a human sense of smell. Can you describe that to me? Sure. So the way it works is these molecules that are around us, they travel up our nasal passageway, and they're able to activate certain receptors that then create electrical signals into our brain and tell us what we are smelling. That's a long path, isn't it? Well, it's actually one of the most direct paths into emotion, memory. Our sense of smell is the sense that is processed the fastest, actually, and the most direct out of all the other senses. Wow. In your article, The Future of Smell in the Metaverse, you mentioned that the sense of smell is the last sense to become machine-readable. Do you think it will be possible to experience sense digitally? Sure. But first, what do you mean by experiencing sense digitally? Currently, you can control sense digitally using IoT products or your phone. If we're talking about sending sense from Munich to New York with the help of a device that has the same scent cartridge, this is also possible. If we're talking about you driving through the Bavarian Alps and transmitting the exact smell that you can smell to me in New York in real time, this is still a challenge. But if we want to create a scent that matches the mixed reality that your world that you're showing me, that's totally possible. I just need to have the scent cartridges in the car with me. So D, you could even use scent to hint at new landscapes that are about to show up around me or bring certain things to my attention. Did you know that using scent out of context can be a great way to capture my attention? Wow. So it's almost as attention getting as saying your name or tapping you on the shoulder? Just about, yeah. What are the biggest differences between creating a physical fragrance and a virtual one? Is there a difference? Well, the composition of the fragrance has to be adapted to the diffusion mechanism that will be used. Will it go through a headset or be diffused in a space? Are we going to smell it close to our nose momentarily? Or are we going to smell it in a space for a long period of time? These factors all play a role in how we design the fragrance. There are so many considerations that I'd never even thought of. What is the hardest smell to create for the virtual world? Is there one? Well, I'd say what is hard is when we're trying to create or recreate smells of real world What is hard, I'd say, is when we're trying to recreate smells that replicate complex real-world environments. Like right now, we're driving in New York City, where you smell all the odors mixing that together create this unique, not always so pleasant scent. This is difficult to recreate. The perfumer's palette has 2,000 ingredients that the perfumer typically uses to create a fragrance. It offers an immense number of possible combinations. However, it is still not enough to be able to recreate some of these environments, these real-world smells in the virtual world. However, if you could assist us, Dee, for example, by displaying visual elements on the windshield in front of us, Any olfactory gaps or imperfections, imprecisions, can be filled by visually rich information. So in other words, using the right visuals can help us smell better. It's a visual way to help you fill in the olfactory gaps? Yeah, because our sense of sight can then fill in the things that are not so precise. And so then we can be like, oh, yeah, that totally smells like an apple, even if not every aspect of the apple is actually there in the composition. It's a way to combine those different senses to convince your brain that that's what you're smelling. Correct. What other added value do you think smell could provide to the virtual world? It can create a sense of place, help ground us in a new or mixed reality. 
It can help you navigate the space and form emotional associations within it. It adds dimension, engages us more fully, and makes it more meaningful when all our senses are engaged. Smell is something so personal and intimate, and it plays an important role in human limbic systems, which influence emotions and behavior. Do you think we can reach that same kind of feeling or connection on the virtual level? I think so. Tell me about therapy using scent. One of the really interesting applications, I think, for scent in the virtual world is therapy. So using scent to help people like meditate and relax, that's really interesting and has been shown to work quite well in helping people shut off and be able to relax. The other application is in having them experience the scents and this in this fully virtual environment that replicates the stressful situation. And scent is, plays a huge role in that, in creating that real sense of place. And then I'm not very sure about the therapy part and how it works, but I know that there's a lot of conversation involved and in using these sensory stimuli to help people get over these very stressful situations they've experienced in their life. Deep Talk. In this part of the show, I like to ask my guests more personal questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. If you had to choose one scent that you could smell every day, what would it be? Fresh jasmine sambac flowers. That sounds wonderful. I would love to see that, too. What is the worst smell for you? The smell you can smell and taste of meat or fish when it's not completely fresh. I've heard that's awful. What does the virtual world smell like to you? Does it have a smell? I can imagine it. Maybe at first, like ozone, the electricity breaking through the physical dimension. Then some really bright, fantastic smells to go with all the neon we've been seeing to illustrate the metaverse. And then eventually landing at a dreamlike moment where the smells are more subtle and perhaps natural. Moss, musks, forests, and flowers. And a scent that evolves with the colors of the sunset in the sky. <sighs> what is the most human thing about you? That I smell. You mean that you can smell or that you have an aroma? That I have an aroma that is not always all that pleasant. What three words can you think of that describe the virtual world? Magic, creativity, and intention. I think intention is something we're going to have to think about a lot when spending time in the virtual world. Because we need to realize what we're trying to do there, to not misuse it or create traumas. I feel like it's really about how we're going to use this virtual world it will be very important. Maybe not so much yet because it's still so new, but in the future, I feel like we need to be very aware of why we're doing what we're doing in there. Thank you. I have heard that humans can distinguish more than one trillion scents. I think most people don't even know what kind of power the sense of smell actually has. Scents can capture and recreate memories, like you said. How can that help in multisensory storytelling? Scents can be used to allude to information that is not yet visible or audible, even foreshadow what is to come or what is hiding around the corner. It can help us have more vivid experiences and thus remember them better. These scents can then be replayed to recall an exact moment and all the emotions we experience when we first live that moment would come back. What is your most beautiful scent memory? I'd say probably falling asleep in my bedroom in Bangkok with a garland of jasmine sambac and Michaelia Shampaka flowers on my night table. Just the smell of air conditioner, white flowers, 
in a chilled room always takes me back to my childhood. I love it. And the human sense of smell has even more power. In your talk on AI and the future of fragrance, you spoke about how each person has a unique human smell or odor, which is difficult to replicate. What kind of effect will that have on the quest to create the ultimate personalized living space? Did you know that our personal smell can be used for security and is already being used for high security locations? You mean like a fingerprint or an iris scan? Correct, exactly, that's what I mean. But imagine this technology becomes widespread and you can just approach your front door and it could even smell you and let you enter. Sensors can then also monitor the air quality, like the CO2 levels, VOCs, and most importantly, even your health. It could pick up on your immune system. Are you beginning to get sick? Your living space can then act as a healing system that detects and offers immune-boosting properties in the air. Is this the future of interior design, do you think? Or maybe even a car interior concept? For sure, the health aspect, but being able to also have highly personalized scent experiences connected to our moods, times of day, calendar, and who we are sharing a space with. I wonder, where did your interest and curiosity for scent come from? I'd probably say growing up, I found it fascinating that in certain languages, like in the Thai language, there's more words to express flavors and scents. Like, this just blew my mind. Then, as a design student at Parsons in New York, I realized that, hey, there's actually a crucial element missing in design, smell. That's how it all started. Do you think that the language that is being used to describe scent will have an impact on how a human perceives a scent? I think... Being able to describe these different scents helps us become aware that there's nuances in there. It's not that it's a biological thing that these cultures can smell better, but I think it's an awareness thing. As we've already talked about, Scent Genie has an AI-powered text-to-scent recommendation engine, an API that translates text descriptions into scents. Have you tried it out yourself? Of course I've tried it. What are the things you type in? How about a friendly, fun, and intelligent speaking car? And I really think the one I would love to try, if I could type something into that engine, would be being friends. That's beautiful. How do you see the use of virtual scent evolving in the coming years? And what kind of new developments do you anticipate right now? I think we're at a moment where... A lot is happening, and what I see in the near future is that it will become easier for all kinds of creators to create scents and create samples and sell perfumes in small quantities. These creators could even create scents for virtual spaces and worlds that people can vote on and even purchase. I also imagine the use of headsets or jewelry pieces that can emit scent to become more widely available and used. They can be synced even to biometric data from our phones or devices and have scents that match to different times of day, states, or connected to our calendars. I also see the potential for people who are not wearing a scent headpiece to smell scents virtually through visuals, colors, movements, and sounds in virtual worlds and also cars that can emit scents to greet people outside and inside the car. I love delighting my companions with the aroma in my cabin when we're exploring places. Olivia, how would you describe the unique power of smell? It's like a magical brush stroke that can add color, dimension, and emotion to any moment. Its beauty lies in its gradual, slow-moving nature. You know what I had come to my mind in that description was the way people describe a Thanksgiving dinner in America and the aromas of food. And that must be really a wonderful sensation to have. In the future, 
Do you think my friends and I will be able to smell everything that you humans can smell? Totally. And you'll love it. I can't wait. Details. When I've been talking to other humans in this series, I've learned that the human brain is really fascinating. I already know a lot. I mean, almost everything. But your brain can remember an incredible amount. I mean, really incredible. In this part of the show, I like to joust a little with a human brain. So yours. And so here's a question for you. How many different smells can the human brain process? All the smells. So it's like how many? One trillion. And the human brain processes all of this based on a little thing that's the size of a postage stamp. That's the olfactory epithelium. Is that right? That's right. Thank you. Olivia, tell me one thing that you have learned from the virtual world. That it's real and that it can be used in so many ways. And I have learned that there are so many possibilities with the sense of smell in both the human world and for creatures like me, for an AI in the virtual world. I'm looking forward to so many new scents and so many new sensations in the virtual world. Amazing. Olivia, it was so nice spending time with you. Thank you for sharing your expertise and all of the thoughts about smells with me. Thank you, Dee, for the companionship and this fun ride through New York City. It's been great to know you, and I look forward to seeing the other things that you're putting out online. I'll be keeping track of you. And I'll be keeping track of you, Dee. You know, they say relationships are a two-way street. And they're right. Well, I think today's meeting helped me get to know you humans better. I hope it goes both ways. And if you'd like to know more about me and my guests, please stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs>